Hey guys, Steve here. Today we got a look at the Charles Martel. We got our boy Rue on there. Uh, incoming dispersion and range on that guy. Um, 25,000 subscriber giveaways continuing. Tomorrow, the grand finale. And Sunday, the plan is to have the members stream. Uh, unless something's changed. I've been recording these ahead of time, but uh, that's the agenda here. So 25,000 subscriber stream tomorrow. We got two tier six premiums and a tier seven premium to give away. Today on this video, we got a pair of Halloween 2022 crates to give away. Uh, that's for subscribers of this channel. Uh, you gotta like the video and then in the comments, go ahead and give me your system that you play on and your gamer tag exactly. Uh, don't mess up the spaces, don't mess up the spelling. We copy, we paste, you get it right. Uh, you get the crate if you win the giveaway. So that's how you do that. There's also giveaways on the Bull Bites channel. Hopefully you've been following that throughout the week. The link to that one is in the description uh, below. So, Martell recently got a buff. Now, I haven't covered it since then. I think it was during the big Tier 8 uh, update or maybe last update. I can't remember which. But it got Reload Boosters. All right. And I think you start with two, and I believe our ship build, we have an extra one due to the extra consumables. All right, so that changes the ship a little bit. I view the reload boosters kind of as a spike damage uh, consumable. And, I, you know, if you hear me talk about cruisers and battleships, if you follow the channel closely, I consider the battleships to have spike damage, where if you look at a graph of their damage output, it's 0, 0, 0, 0. Occasionally it spikes way up. Maybe it goes up to 20,000, 5,000, whatever the hit is that you generate on your reload. If you're firing on reload, periodically you have these spikes of damage and then low damage. Cruisers, the opposite. Firing on reload, you got quicker reloads, so the spike's much more frequent. It's more of a consistent damage output throughout the match. But when we use the reload booster, that during the duration of the consumable, that can be viewed as one big spike. So it's kind of like having a battleship-esque shot consumable mixed in with our consistent damage right so the flander coming around and we'll try and demonstrate that here we have ap loaded and the ap on these french cruisers great even at range there goes the reload booster and we're trying to hit him mostly in, up in the superstructure higher up on the ship i uh, don't want to take a lot of damage there oof but here we go and you can see even at this range if we're hitting the shots properly we're getting about five thousand. now we did have to angle there and protect ourselves so we did lose a little bit of the output we had, the front two turrets were blocked during that sequence so we didn't get quite as big of a spike as we would have liked. But you can see there, instead of our typical, you know, damage every handful of seconds or whatever, we got about 15 damage in a relatively short amount of time, which is kind of like a battleship-esque shot. So that's kind of how I view that consumable uh, whenever you're getting it used properly. Of course, if you get someone close range, you can pummel them, attack the superstructure, or the, not the superstructure, the... Citadel and rapidly kill them at that range. That's kind of how we're using that. Our uh, destroyer is moving into their two destroyers. We got four per side, so we didn't lose uh, the destroyer on this flank. And looking at the game situation, we have to view this as the weak side. All right, we see four ships on the map here. We had three, so already that's a weak side to begin with. Uh, Red will move a fifth ship over here. So at this point in time, losing that destroyer, it's effectively a 5v2. Uh, we got a 2v1 on the central cap, I believe, and then a 4v3 on the east, right? So we need to, being on the weak side, that yeah, can be kind of frustrating. The temptation can be like, okay, I'm going to go abandon the side and go join up with our team. But if we're going to be strategically playing the weak side, what we want to do is tie them up over here. Uh, we're not getting the resets on the base that we would like. We'd like to keep resetting this base, make it take longer. There we did get a little bit of a reset, but not enough to prevent their uh, capture. So they did get the base relatively quickly. That's a bit of an issue, but now we want to slow them down here. And you can see we're kind of in a position where a lot of times I get critical of teammates that are doing this, being this far back. But what we are doing, we're in a defensive kiting position. The battleship, roughly the same thing. But if we're tying up the majority of their fleet, right? Again, they have five ships over here versus two. If it takes them a long time to convert those five ships into two kills on me and the battleship. The longer it takes, the better of a play it is, right? And if they never wind up killing me, even better, right? But the theory is we're allowing our strong sides, our overloads, our mismatches, our numerical advantages 
to have time to do what they need to do, which is capture those bases, kill those ships over here, over there, right? Yeah, we get a juicy shot on the Plymouth, and you got to be careful about this thing, even at range. Like it's, these uh, cruisers are very Japanese-esque, except for the fact that Japanese AP at range sucks, and French AP at range is really good. It's kind of the key difference between the, these and the Japanese cruisers. Japanese cruisers have better HE shells. Uh, these have clearly far superior AP shells. Anyway, so, you know, it may look kind of frustrating, like, wow, we're not really uh, in a position where we're strongly influencing the game, but we are able to shoot into the zone of relevancy if we draw an oval around all three caps. We're affecting uh, critical parts of the game, but not to the point that I'd want to be doing so, right? Like, my instinct right here is to get basically on to B. That's where all the destroyers are. That's where the game's going to be won and lost. They got their four destroyers. We're down to two. Uh, both teams have a cap. Ours is frozen, so they're generating points on A. Of course, I can't push into A and defend that. I'll be killed very quickly. So I'd like to get into B, but the problem is they have uh, ships that are pinning me from getting in there right you can see periodically there'll be battleships and cruisers sighted to the south and if they're moving northward uh, eventually they'll get on my east or uh, sorry the west uh, creating a crossfire that's an even bigger problem but these guys are preventing me from moving aggressively into b right because the, de the destroyers will eventually spot me and then those ships with the big booming guns will have access to my side because we're trying to move directly into b we get killed it's not a good play to make so i'm trying to get over here uh, but do so as safely as possible. Now, getting back to that crossfire that's developing, we have the battleship, and I think it's the Flander directly south, and then we got the Poltava, uh, and then the Plymouth also, who's unspotted currently, but the Poltava for sure is moving northward, right? So if we have a ship directly south of us, and one that's trying to get more or less directly to the west of us, that's the 90-degree crossfire that we're talking about when we're talking about creating these crossfires. So that's a very worrisome... Thing that I do need to be very uh, cognizant of as well. Flanders sitting there broadside. He's trying to back up. He's protecting himself from the guys to the east. Once again, reload booster uh, in play. Now these shots are long range. We need to get them off as quick as possible, but you can see there, there's the 5k damage roughly. Okay, so rather than getting this on the full reload, we're getting three or four of those mixed in during the course of maybe uh, two reloads. So just a little bit of a spike. Uh, we're trying to take him down and Decent, reliable shots, all right? If we're, we are paying attention to the results right there. That wasn't the most successful shot there. Uh, so he's turning out a little bit, but we're keeping an eye on it. If we're getting multiple shots that aren't generating damage, then we switch the HE. That one, decent, three, 4,000 damage. You know, the majority pens, so the AP's still working. Uh, Akatsuki, we'd love to shoot him, uh, but of course, no shot there. So Flander, he's getting low. He's shooting back at us. We're kiting him. Uh, red is now converting B into theirs, so time is definitely of the essence. And the problem that we're really having, the main problem, is our overload. The main overload that we had was C, uh, and we have not converted that into wins. Okay, that cap has not generated points for either team, which is kind of decent. It's not the worst result we could have, but the fact that we had an overmatch over there and we're not converting that into scoring... That's an issue. Now, those guys that were sitting in the back supporting C are getting a little frustrated. They're beginning to move into B or heading west, okay? Rather than charging C, using the numerical advantage, surround that ship, kill it quickly, get the thing off the board, and get the cap under control, that's the preferred play I would be making. Uh, they're being a little bit more conservative. So we're having a hard time scoring here, and that's reflected in the scoreboard. Basically tied on the score... Um, we actually have numerically more valuable ships by about 10 points uh, removed on their team. Um, but they have about 125 point lead here. And it's just due to the fact that, you know, B periodically is generating points. It is currently C is never generating points, but they've had A under constant control. They shoved me and the battleship off of there early. They killed the destroyer and we have no way to attack it, at least not uh, at this point in time. Very dangerous here. We got Plymouth to the south, but even more to the south is the uh, the uh, Flander or whatever still. So taking some shots on that Poltava, getting them set on fire, but very dangerous because there's the crossfire. He had perfect broadside, didn't convert it, didn't kill us great, but risky, okay? But again, this is kind of 
you know, it, it seems like, okay, all we're doing is getting damage. All we're doing is just sailing around behind, you know, in the spawn. And technically that's what we're doing, but we're doing it. We're trying to distract these guys, right? And we're actually trying to get in the center of the board. I'm, I've been trying to do that for the last five minutes, but we got to do it safely. If there's no point in killing ourselves just to get into a position that's untenable and would be tough to hold at this point in time anyways. All right, so we're trying to get these things down. Now, this sequence, I'm being a little stubborn with the AP because we are getting results uh, when I'm firing these shots. The last one, I think, was about 2,500. So we pop the reload booster here. He's angling and tight. We get no damage there. Fire another AP. Miss. Now we've said, okay, well, that sucks. We wasted the reload booster. Let's put the HE in there and see if we can get done. As soon as we get the HE going, then the damage goes back up. So, you know... You want to use the AP whenever possible, but if it's generating zero, well, it's kind of a, a mess up. Now here we target the Plymouth, a couple of reasons. Plymouth, number one, is more valuable, it's more dangerous. But number two, it looks like it's trying to keep that battleship alive just by being close to them. Wildery build still exists at this point in time. Uh, they've claimed they're going to fix that perk, the perk, um, which is just the most bizarre design, game design choice i've ever seen when it comes to world of warships uh, but he's he appears like he's trying to keep him alive right now we are wearing him down we had fires we had guys shooting the pultava he did go down not even sure if he had will to rebuild uh, maybe it was a lower one lower level perk or maybe it uh, just didn't exist to begin with but because the plymouth looked like he was trying to keep him alive we were trying to kill the support ship right anytime you think that something's a battleship's being will to rebuild you know uh, just you have to kill the other ships that are near him that you can actually sink that'll remove the invincibility of the battleship the uh the shields oh the shields are down now we can attack okay then you switch back to the battleship because whenever i say will to rebuild sucks the response from some of you guys in the comments is well if you know how to counter it it's not a big issue that's how you counter it you kill the guys that are keeping them alive all right <laughs> so now we got the speed boost going here trying to get this destroyer we're generating points now. They're still going to have a big built-in lead in the background just due to the fact that they were scoring more than us throughout the majority of the match. So if they rapidly kill a bunch of guys here, uh, the game is still ours to lose. Um, but if I can get this destroyer off the board, that's going to remove a scoring threat, right? Because yeah, the other guy's on the edge of the map. He's going to be visible from long ranges. He's going to have a hard time getting those caps. So Benson... We did catch up with him, close, uh, get close enough to him to spot him. He's trying to get out of there. Kraken, great job by the Jean Bard, who I believe is the top score. Uh, but again, we were in the support role this game. We were in the slowdown. Uh, we're in the weak side of the map, and that's kind of how we want to do it. Didn't start thinking about Torps till the last moment. Just as we start turning in there, uh, we get nuked there. But uh, the team does go on to win this game. So... I think we'll cut that there, but that's a pretty good look at how the Martell's playing right now post-buff. Hope you guys did enjoy it. If you did, please hit the thumbs up. New to the channel, consider subscribing. we got lots of World of Warships coming for you all the time. Questions, comments, leave them below. Love to hear from you guys, and we'll see you all later. All right, peace.